Welcome to The Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planels, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 160 subscribers and the goal is to make it to 250. So please like, comment, and subscribe and let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Melissa Majumdar, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome back to the hot sauce. Uh, thank you for coming back. Today we have a special episode. We have my good friend and fellow spokesperson, Melissa Majumdar here. And so we're going to put her in the hot seat and let her take it away. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us about your journey into the profession and um, go ahead. The floor is yours. Go. All right, let's do it. Well, Angel, thanks for having me. This is fun. A little bit different. I'm Melissa Majumdar, and I am a registered dietitian. The CSOWM, for those who don't know, is a certified specialist in obesity and weight management. So I am just coming on your show today to kind of talk you through my career and how I got to this hot seat today, right? Yeah, totally, totally. So yeah, why don't you, like, I guess... If you were going to kind of go through it, why don't you, what got you interested in the profession and then just take it from there? Yeah. So super fun that you asked and, and Angel, you asked me to pull some pictures, which was a great trip down memory lane. While I was doing that, I found a paper I wrote in 2001 and I said that I chose sports nutrition as a semester long project because I just wanted to learn more about nutrition. So I think at 14 years old, I already knew, is that 2001? I'm trying to do the math. Somewhere around 14 years old, I already knew I wanted to study nutrition. I think I had no idea what a dietitian was or that you could have a career in nutrition, but I knew that I had a passion for nutrition, wanted to learn more. I was always an athlete, gymnast, turned diver, turned runner, and just was always curious about how that could impact my performance. I think I was also curious about like, what are my coaches telling me and are they telling me legit stuff. <laughs> right, I right. remember drinking some like nutritional shakes as a gymnast because I had a strained stomach muscle and I'm like, this can't be right. This is disgusting. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So you, so you That's got, I guess your, your, your entry was um, a sports nutrition slant and then yeah, just tell us uh, college internship, all the, all the yeah, rest. So I think I got into it obviously as an athlete and wanted to focus on sports nutrition, but you know, nothing is, is, is linear. So I did learn that there was a dietitian job and was able to shadow some dietitians in high school. And that was really great experience for me to know what I didn't want to do. I think one of my first experiences was counseling or watching her counsel a, a patient who had just had open heart surgery. And I was like, how is this the right time to be telling someone what to eat? This just doesn't seem like the right fit for me. And so I think I quickly learned that outpatient or you know having a chance to establish those relationships lifelong relationships with patients was more what I wanted and it was really cool because I can picture myself sitting in a bariatric surgery nutrition class um, probably around like 2004 or something like that and now that's the field I'm in so bariatric surgery is has been my specialty for about 12 years now and it's really fun to like picture my myself as a, a, a young person and just embracing everything those folks were telling me and learning from them, which I think to this day is still, you know, what inspires me to be a dietitian is learning from my patients, right? Mm -hmm. So, right. so like I said, started off wanting to do sports nutrition, knew I didn't want inpatient, um, was able to do my internship with Sodexo and chose to do that because I took a turn somewhere in college. I think we watched um, Super Size Me. I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I can change the world. All I have to do is get into schools and change what we eat, right? Simple. Um, and so I was like, all right, I'll do my internship uh, with Sodexo. I studied hospitality management in undergrad as well, kind of had that combined approach to try and you know take over school lunch programs and first rotation and in internship was food service and i was like heck no we're not doing that <laughs> so, um, i think i learned more about what i didn't want to do before i understood what i really did want to do and um so sodexo had a great internship had a really amazing internship director janet debelius who i'm still in contact with now so that's super fun 
but what I learned through internship and then, you know, first job was not the clinical route that, you know, we're always told to do is to work inpatient, right? Instead, I had the opportunity to work in a private practice with another dietitian. So here we go. Here's my chance to do outpatient. Um, and while I didn't follow that, you know, trajectory that everyone tells us to do, it was what I wanted to do. And I had a great time doing, you know, I was able to do um, nutrition counseling, but also personal training and um, some some uh, corporate wellness and kind of just had my hand in everything and got to have that still, I think, broad range of outpatient experience um, and then took the turn to bariatrics, knowing that I really did enjoy weight management. I liked those lifelong relationships. GI was interesting to me, the vitamins. So bariatrics is that special place for me where all of that comes together and you have the opportunity in bariatrics to really be valued as a dietitian. Your mm -hmm. role on the interdisciplinary team is super important, both pre-op, post-op, and to get to have autonomy in that, that, that team framework is, I think, a little unique. Absolutely. No, that's good. Um, <clears throat> could you tell us where you went to school and where you did your internship? Because we kind of, yes. you, you talked about your experience, but you, we, we didn't get to hear that. So I did. I glossed yeah. over that. So I did undergrad at University of Illinois. So in Champaign, in the middle of our, our library in Illinois um, at Champaign is underground because we don't want to block the sun from getting to the cornfield. So that's where we went to undergrad, uh, where dietetics lives in the agriculture school of agriculture. So that's fun. Okay. Um, undergrad there. From there, I moved to Baltimore and did the internship with Sodexo Mid Atlantic. Um, and so my I'm trying to think, my my clinical rotations were um, mostly in a, a community hospital at that time um, called St. Joseph's Medical Center, which is now under the University of Maryland umbrella. Um, so it worked from there. Um, worked for a couple years and then went back to get my master's. I did not get it straight out of undergrad and did my master's um, at Northeastern University, started an online program, applied nutrition with a focus on fitness and nutrition. And with Northeastern universities in Boston, but I was doing my program while living in Baltimore and then moved to Boston right before finishing my, my master's. And so I got to walk at graduation. Nice, nice, awesome. Kind and so fun. now <clears throat> you are you are in Atlanta, correct? You you're you're keeping up. <laughs> I'm keeping up. I'm keep, I gotta keep I gotta I gotta keep tabs on people now. <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> so what are you doing I, in Atlanta now? Yeah, so I'm in Atlanta. I've been here almost four years and I'm still in bariatrics, but no longer in um a, a outpatient clinical setting. I am coordinating a bariatric surgery program at Emory University Hospital Midtown. And so um, kind of a fun little factoid, I am the first dietitian in Emory Healthcare within the Office of Quality. So my role as bariatric coordinator lives under the Office of Quality. So kind of a different structure than I think, you know, most dietitians are working under. So my day to day is, you know, either looking at data and trying to present data and tell a story with data. So I spend a lot of time in Excel and trying to tell a story with a graph. Um, and then the other part of my, my job is either patient facing or provider facing where I'm educating and inter interacting kind of the liaison to the patient and all the providers um, and managing accreditation. So, you know, one day I'm speaking to pharmacists, the next I'm trying to, you know, encourage the surgeon to do something different and the next time educating a patient and you know working with the nurses to get discharges going awesome well it's it's a non-traditional rd role but it clearly showcases the fact that you can that rds can fit in any type of setting yes. so bravo Absolutely. To you. that's awesome that's awesome all right so <clears throat> next question for you is what has been the most enlightening and humbling aspect of being in the media yeah, I liked that that you asked that question because I think it it reminds us that we need to choose our words carefully, and that's not just in the media, but you know everyone can interpret our words differently. Communication is two sided, right? What we say is one thing, and then how it's going to be interpreted. 
and how it's going to be used. So learned and continue to learn that we need to choose our words for our audience. And that means, you know, knowing the reporter we're speaking to or knowing, like I mentioned for my day-to-day -day work, the, the professional that I'm speaking to or the patient and what that patient's background is. And if you don't, you learn the hard way that you didn't choose correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool. All right, so <clears throat> this is always an interesting question to ask because I feel like some people will say nothing changes and some people say that things could change or they might do something different. So if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? Yeah, I think I think about this often. And what I really just try to live by is to to just have grace for myself in the past because we always you know want to only make decisions with the information we have at the time and so sure like are there things that i could have fine-tuned along the years hundred percent but i didn't have the information i have now and so you know what's what's the term hindsight's 2020 right right well, we right. don't have that corrective vision for our past and so let's give ourselves grace but also like learn from our experiences and you know make changes in ourselves through, as we as we grow but um i wouldn't do anything different because i can't do anything different how about that yeah that's that's perfectly fine i always like i said it's just a funny it's an interesting question to ask because you know i think for most of the people that i've had interviews with most people would say they wouldn't change much in terms of their career trajectory because it is unique to them and, and has made them what they are and clearly Absolutely. certain things that we've done volunteer wise or you know career wise the fact that you went the non-traditional route starting out it's kind of opened your eyes to certain things i i think uh, yes you're absolutely correct most people are saying you know start out clinical 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 well if if uh, as you mentioned in the internship the food service side wasn't for you so you knew that right away yeah. it's 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 all good i think we have to kind of just take it as it comes. And, and like I said, I wouldn't change much about mine because I feel like it's given me a unique perspective on life yeah. and and has given us a good opportunity to grow as an individual and as a dietitian. So, so yeah, it's, I just ask it because sometimes I feel a younger person might look at this and have concern about like, you know, when we're all younger, it's like, I want to do everything. We want to do, do the best we can. Now. Well, and it's, I think it's funny too, because like talking about not going the, the traditional clinical route. Well, now I spend half my day on an inpatient unit and, but I'm not doing that, you know, traditional clinical role still. And so I think we can like go full circle and, you know, but have all the experiences from going around and really, all right, well now maybe is the right time. And right. that wasn't, and I embrace all the experiences I've had leading up to it and would have never gotten to where I am or enjoyed it at this time if I hadn't gone the route you know no, right, no regrets right. yeah for absolutely sure. absolutely okay cool well the next question is what does the future hold for you yeah so I'm I love my job and I, I really like the opportunity to spend a lot of times with patients. And so a lot of my, my work is in quality improvement. And, you know, I think dietitians are really set up to do well with quality improvement because we're, we tend to be, you know, detail focused, but can usually still step back and see the big picture. And, you know, like I said, trying to both work with numbers, you know, instead of a two feed formula, I'm crunching Excel formulas, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. So I love the combination that I get to do. And so what I'm hoping, you know, in, in my career is to use that quality improvement, you know, experience and turn towards people a little bit more. So I'm, I'm a leader in my job, but I, I don't manage anyone. And I really would like the opportunity to, to oversee people. And, and I've gotten the chance to mentor quite a few people over the years, but to, I'd love to do it more formally. I, I have had, um, a brief manager experience in, in one role. So love to, to expand on that experience. And as well as, so um, within Emory Healthcare, you know, bariatric surgery, we have four different programs and, you know, we really have worked to learn from each other because all the programs are a little bit different. And so we've come over in the last, you know, three, four years, a lot more system 
initiatives and working together. And so I'd love to see that umbrella and kind of bring it all together. Um, so yeah, looking for, for more experience with management and for um, a, a, a more global picture within my industry or within my role. But I've really had the pleasure um, in the last couple of years to have some really good mentors as well as just leaders. And I think that's what I would, you know, one advice I give to anybody, not just a young dietitian, but to try and find a job where people support you and not just your role. And so I'm very lucky within Emory and my current leadership that they want to grow me as a human and grow, you know, my skill set, um, knowing that I'm not going to be in my job forever. But hey, maybe we can retain keep her. Around, keep you around yeah. as long as I can. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, cool. And then I know that you are going to wrap up your second term as a spokesperson, right? I know, I know. <laughs> it's been so great. It's so it's so sad, but the good news is that it's not goodbye. I'll see you later. So yes, yes, absolutely. Well, you know, I think the thing is, we'll we'll still, you know, if you go to Fancy or whatever, we'll see yeah. you around, and we are all connected, you know, socially. So we'll see what's happening, and then, yeah, it's it's always good to see. I mean, it kind of feels like I met you. A couple of weeks ago, even though that was like, I know uh, it's been six years, six years. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it feels short. Yeah. <laughs> when we just look at pictures of our children over the years, then we're like, oh, it has been a while. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Because yeah. I'm looking at your kids. I'm like, that's not. Oh, that is your kids. <laughs> yeah, they were like my my son is seven and a half. So six years ago, he was like a baby. And now yes, he's a, exactly, a full exactly. human. Yeah, with, exactly. With well, my my daughter is you know, my daughter's nine and my son's 13 and they'll yeah. be turning 10 and 14. And it's like, you know, they feel like little and, and I'm looking at pictures and people are like, wow, you got like a full grown man next to you. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's, he's you know, still your, your baby, but yeah. 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 So yeah, I'm, 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 you know, I'm bummed, but I'm happy to, you know, it's, it's a embracing family. We all love each other and, and we want to see each other do well. So I appreciate all the efforts you put in and, um, you know, I know you'll, you'll be continuing to rock on. So, so you'll be good. Well, that's my plan, Angel. I'm waiting to hear, I know they, they announced Academy elections, but I'm waiting for the DPG elections. Um, so hoping to still be at Fancy, you know, just using my volunteer efforts at, mm -hmm. at the DPG front. So, awesome. Awesome. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. So the final question for you is, do you have any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians? And, and I think um, <clears throat> a lot of people have highlighted different things, whatever you want to go, what do you feel would be words of wisdom? And I, and I think I've heard people discuss it from a career front, from a volunteer front, whatever, whatever angle you want to go with, everyone yeah. appreciates any of these words. So go for it. I have a couple thoughts when you ask that question. First, you know, I've I've had, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. This is my sixth job, and what I've learned from you know hopping around so much is that all we can do is embrace change. That's you know the only thing that's constant, right? Is change, and you know, but that doesn't mean don't advocate for yourself, and that's something I've learned a lot of. Stand up for yourself, whether it's the financial impact that you want from a new job or just, you know, advocating for the dietitian role within a, within a department. Um, so that's, that's what biggest, I think, advice is embrace the change, but advocate for yourself along the way. And, you know, that can be done both on a professional front or volunteer front. Um, you know, I've, I, I laugh with other people who volunteer a lot that I'm a volunteer addict and, please help me say no, but it's really volunteering is a great opportunity. You know, the spokesperson program for one, how we got to know each other, but also just a great way to network and, you know, get to know what other dietitians, the amazing work that other dietitians are doing. So kind of like I explained in my early career of, well, here's what I don't want to do, but here's some other cool stuff that's happening. And to both network for the people, but also for the roles. And, you know, I think what's helped me network a lot or what I feel is something um, that's helped me is being vulnerable and, you know, 
sharing my misses with others and then that breaks down kind of a barrier and I get to learn from other people about I so here's here's what I want to ask you Angel do you remember the first time I met you I was brand new you would you had been a spokesperson for a year I think before right yeah yeah so you told me a story you were vulnerable oh uh-huh, yeah 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 what's the story I... you told me? what's the story what's the story gonna... you had told me about a like kind of a media flop yes yes well that was a you know it was something that we learned over time and it was a it was a good uh i can't talk about the, <laughs> the institution that reached out but you know there was a there was an article that i tried to take it in a very diplomatic stance and i think unfortunately um there was a chance for something to become very political so we had to make it yeah. anonymous but That's what it was. you know yep. it was it was i i remember i know exactly i was yeah. on the i i just got i just got a moved to the bus. We were on the bus. When yeah, I we were on the bus. We were on the we're bus on the way to dinner. And so it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier of like, choose your words, know your audience. Yes, no, <laughs> and I had no problems talking about it because- And that's what was really helpful. And I was like, okay, like, I'm going to, I'm going to learn. I'm going to grow. I'm going to do my best. And, you know, I think that's another piece of advice is like, do something that scares us. Like, oh my God, I can't, I can't like thinking about that first year as a media spokesperson, like I was so scared. And I think by doing something I was scared of, I grew even more of like, well, I can do hard things, right? And I'm not gonna do them well every time, but I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna grow. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that is very interesting about being in the role that we do is that it is a, you not just represent yourself, but you represent the whole profession. So there's this weight on your shoulders that you feel. And I, you know, I, I definitely have personalized it where I don't want to let the profession down. I don't want to let anybody down. So it's like, we want to be our best. We want to perform at our best. And even if in, in a, and of course we are our own harshest critics. Cause every time you look at yourself on TV or you hear yourself talk, you cringe and you're like, Oh my God, I could do this or do that. And then of course everyone's like, Oh, that was awesome. And so it's like our eyes versus the the general public's eyes or other people's eyes. It's it's an amazing thing. But I think the thing is, is that we come with the knowledge, we come with the experience, we come with the expertise. So then let's go for it. We do have some, I guess, pizzazz and charisma. <laughs> so it's good. But, but I mean, it's, 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 it's something that we, it's gifts that we've been graced with. And so then I think we can, we can share it. And develop. And develop. And sometimes, it, sometimes it just clicks, right? Where, you know, we might say the wrong words at the wrong time sometimes, but other times you're like, wow, that reporter got it. Or you hear, you know, someone read your article that you have a quote in and you're like, that made a difference. And I think that that's why I'm a spokesperson 100% is to just like, did I impact somebody today? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's why we're dietitians is we want to help. Yes. And it just kind of yes. like reaches a broader audience. And, you know, that's the amazing thing about bariatric surgery, too, is like I'm impacting my patient, but they're also their whole family. They're making changes that will impact their their child's, you know, trajectory Mm -hmm. on whether they're in that same position someday. And so maybe someone read that quote in an article and they're doing the thing and making their life better. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's so fun. I don't know if you've encountered anybody who's come to you afterwards and said they've seen you or heard you do something have you you've had that right yeah. and what yeah. and what is the feeling it's like oh yeah i'm like oh you you did you saw that and like oh cool because it'll be like random people too right yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. yeah i my my funniest one was um i was coaching uh you know i, I coached soccer before and so i did a i did an article in the magazine talking about um alcohol consumption and recovery afterwards and you know this one person comes up it's like oh angel's gonna teach me how to recover from my hangover <laughs> you're like well i'll just cook your kid but i have yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. exactly i was like uh, maybe maybe we don't talk about that but yeah that's that's well, funny well cool well thank you i greatly appreciate your time and um yes let's let's keep in touch and you know i appreciate like i said i appreciate everything you've done and it's been great knowing you and, and I'm sure we will see you around. And um, yeah, you're, you know, you're talking like we're saying goodbye. I'm still no, but you are this. around. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm wrapping up this episode, but I know you. We know I'm going to come live. stay on a houseboat in Seattle in the meantime. I just, I just uh, saw some design show and I'm going to, I'm going to live in a houseboat. 
Okay, well, hey, I'm only I'm only like three miles away from the lake, so we could we could be all right. Okay. <laughs> all right, well, thank you. I'm also on the platform Buy Me a Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the uh, individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.